A Glock is a Glock, and that is it, at least as far as most people are concerned. But then there are these different types of Glocks, and these strange add-ons to their names, like Gen 3 or Gen 4. These little things stand for the different generations. Now when you think of other things coming in different generations, you might know that there are actual differences between them. Not always are they enough to matter for everyone or just for you, and sometimes they simply are. Another example are 1911s. Yes, one of the competitors of Glocks. This type of gun has been around since, you guessed it from the name, since the year 1911. In all of these years, there have been changes that might look marginal at best, but that do improve the original design considerably once you actually use the gun. Compared to the 1911, the Glock is still a very young system, but it does have its own long production run. On the American market, it has been available since 1986. With that amount of time, the temptation to change a little detail here and there was just overwhelming. That led to the five generations that you see today. There have been some quite important changes, but the basic system is still the same. A plain and simple pistol with minimal controls that just does what it is supposed to do whenever it is called upon. With that being said, let's take a look at what the generations are and what makes them special. Generation 1 the first generation had its time from 1982 to 1987. It was the big Glock 17 that came with a capacity of 17 rounds. Now, you might suspect a connection between it having 17 rounds in the magazine and the model number 17, but as things are sometimes, that is pure coincidence. Glock assigns model numbers based on the patent. At that time, the design made for quite some publicity. Being polymer, everyone was afraid that this was the perfect gun for criminals as it would just not be detected by metal detectors. Gun-savvy guys knew that this was plain wrong, as there was the ammo that would set off the alarm as well as some major parts that were made from metals. However, that was how the Glock was perceived by the market. Being the first of many to come, this generation was the basic of basics. It had a reputation for being reliable and accurate, but it missed all the features that would come with future generations. It was just that reputation that helped it find its way to America. Generation 2 Generation 2 was the first update of the design, and it stayed from 1988 all the way to 1997. After it found its way into the spotlight and the American market, it was normal to expect improvements to make it more attractive for shooters and to keep it up to date. In some ways, Generation 2 did not bring many changes. Instead, it was still a reliable and proven design that was popular to begin with. However, if you look at the type range, there were some new options added. New calibers were produced, while the biggest changes otherwise were some passive safety upgrades. Minor changes were just cosmetic, with a grip sporting more checkering at the front and back strap. Generation 3 From 1998 to 2009, Generation 3 was produced. It did retain all the changes that came with Generation 2, but more importantly, it came with some more improvements. That started with an accessory rail. Thanks to that, the owners of the gun could now attach lasers and lights. This made these pistols much better suited for self and home defense when you want to identify a target in the dark using a light or getting the gun on target faster with a laser. If the rail had been all that changed, it would have been a great generation. But there was one controversial thing that did set off quite a few shooters and fans. The Generation 3 introduced finger grooves in front of the grip and a thumb rest on either side. While this seemed trivial for many, and even helpful for some when it comes to recoil control, there is that faction on the market that abhors finger grooves. A storm followed, condemning this unwanted help on the grip, making for quite some waves. Generation 4 Generation 4 had its manufacturing time from 2010 all the way to 2016. You might now think that was inspired by the anti-finger groove faction, but surprise surprise, the finger grooves stayed, as well as the thumb rest. Not always does a very loud minority manage to pose for the majority, as most customers were either indifferent to the finger grooves or welcomed them as what they were, a way to manage the recoil. So. If it were not for the grooves, then what brought about the new generation? A cool new system to mitigate the recoil in yet one more way. This time, besides the finger grooves that help your hands retain control, 
It was the recoil itself that became the target. Glock introduced a system to better reduce its force to make the guns much more pleasant to shoot. In fact, many shooters getting into a Gen 4 commented on how the recoil was much better compared to their older Gen 3 models. How did Glock achieve this feat? They went from a one-spring recoil system to a two-spring system. For that, a smaller coil was embedded into the bigger one, acting like a shock absorber. This worked like a piston inside the spring, reducing not only the felt force of the recoil but also muzzle rise, allowing for much faster follow-up shots. While the haters of the finger grooves might have felt unheard, Glock actually did listen to the wishes of the customers. Besides keeping the finger grooves, they brought about another upgrade in the form of a larger magazine release. With more real estate for the thumb, it made dropping the magazine much easier. This upgrade was no coincidence, as the owners of Gen 3 Glocks very often used aftermarket mag releases that were bigger. At the same time, Glock openly acknowledged that the hands of shooters are not necessarily created equal. What was too big for another person may be too small for another. To make the pistols fit more shooters perfectly, they came with replaceable back straps in various sizes. With it, your Glock can be made to exactly fit the size of your hands. Then there was the era of the red dots. When Generation 4 came to its end, everybody and his dog started to shoot with red dots. Glock saw this change in demand and offered the MOS version. This accepted red dots from most major brands without any milling or any work performed by a gunsmith. Generation 5 Generation 5 has been around since 2017 and introduced the most external upgrades since the beginning of the production. All in all, five changes were made to bring this gun back to modernity. This begins with following the trend to more ambidextrous controls. Now, the slide stop can easily be actuated by a lefty and a righty without having to alter the grip or anything else. Then there were the forward slide serrations. More and more gun reviewers commented on features like this, so Glock followed the competition and added forward slide serrations as well, no matter how important or maybe not important they might be. Another trend of the time was for faster and easier magazine changes. Let's face it, if you have 15 rounds in your Glock 19, you have to change your magazine in a self-defense encounter. Okay, that might not be the case, but you never know. So, being able to reload fast does have an advantage. While you might not see it from the outside, the new Glocks come with a flared magwell. That makes it much easier to get the next magazine properly seated in the grip while in a gunfight in less time. Another change is the beveling and sculpting of the slide and muzzle. That does not only make the appearance more rounded, but also helps with carrying a Glock concealed, one of the most common uses of these pistols. Last but not least, the anti-finger groove lobby won, and this feature disappeared. Many see that as a step back, a return to Gen 1 if you will. However, there is the hope that the little helpers for your fingers when controlling the recoil might appear again in the next generation. Just wait and see. Glock has done its best to produce a great gun that is accurate, reliable, and extremely easy to use. Over time, they have adapted their products more and more to the demands of the shooters with their new generations. For the future, it is safe to assume that Glocks will live on and stay reliable as well as accurate. They will be easy to use as well, and if you think about changes, maybe the trigger will improve, or maybe the finger grooves will come back. If you want to venture a guess, put it into the comments.